Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, hope you guys are doing well and you're excited about this. Um, my name is Sebastian. Um, I work at Sauce Labs. Uh, the Sauce Labs t-shirt on. I forgot my, my little batch at my hotel room today. So um, I do work at Sauce, as I said. Um, what I do there is like I'm a, I'm a senior software engineer. Um, I usually work on web technology type of stuff. Lots, uh, lots of front end code. Um, a little bit deeper down on like the middle layer. Sometimes I touch like the back end and like the database stuff and all that. I've been working on the virtualization layer, but what I'm really passionate about is like web technology. Um, so <clears throat> it brings me to my next slide. Um, what to expect from my talk? Um, I mean, let the internet work for you is a little bit generic. Um, it doesn't mean like uh, early retirement. So if you guys were looking for that, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, so the principles in my talk are um, fairly universal. Um, Sorry, I need to just take my time. There it is. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about testing, uh, continuous integration, how it all fits together. Um, but um, I'm going to talk it in like a very specific way, which is um, you know the web and browsers. Um, so you can take a lot of what I'm doing here and apply it to you know like your regular unit tests that are not running in a browser, that are not in JavaScript and all that. But um, my demos and all that, they will they will be focused on uh, web technology and the and the the web. Um, yeah, so I'm considering myself like a generation of the uh, part of the generation web. That's you know kind of like why I chose that route, and um, <clears throat> that's just what I enjoy the most. I do like JavaScript inside and outside of the browser, and that's why like all of my demos and all that stuff is in JavaScript. All right. Um, so uh, the bigger idea, or like the idea behind this conference, is open source, obviously. So. Um, um, what my slide says here is like, you know, every great project starts out with an idea. So you, you know, you go somewhere, you get inspired, you want to do something cool, um, you want to write some code, right? So um, a lot of us just uh, every now and then have a great idea and, you know, want to do something awesome, which is not even like related to work. So, you know, the only thing that I could just dream up was like, you know, why don't, we, why can't we have a Pinterest where you can upload uh, uh, cat pictures, multiple ones at the same time? Um, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but what I'm, like, my point is that um, um, we all are very creative in that space, and um, we have like awesome tools um, and and frameworks like you know Ruby on Rails or like um, Django, for example, that make it really easy to like put something together in like a really short time. Um, so um, most like every other like every other week or every other month, I find myself uh, you know with my friends and be like, oh. You know, we have this great idea. Let's build a you know Pinterest for cat pictures, and uh, you know we just get together and uh, and uh, build something cool. And it doesn't really make any. It doesn't have any business purpose. Sometimes it's just to uh, explore new technologies, uh, get your hands dirty with, let's say CouchDB or like you know one of the NoSQL databases and all that. Even though at work we use a SQL database, for example. Um, so uh, this is kind of like how, how it goes down, right? So one guy has the idea. He does uh, most of the work. Uh, the other people come along. Uh, one guy, most of the time, doesn't really know what he's doing. Uh, the other guy says he's helping, but he is not. I mean, this is obviously just a, you know, a funny little uh, uh, play on hangover. Um, but you know, uh, the other guy who disappears uh, at the very beginning comes back at the end and says, like, what are we going to do with all this? And, and then he uh, suggests, like, hey, oh, shit, sorry. Let's open source it. So. Um, what I mean by that is like when we build a side project, um, like most recently we built like a little web app that was based on Node.js and Express, and we had a database. And um, there's not really a whole lot of things out there that we liked when we, we were talking to the database and just making raw like REST calls. Didn't really cut it as much, so we started building like a little model layer. And you know, uh, as much as that might not work for most other people because it's kind of like in a, in a fairly early stage, more like a prototype or like an alpha. Uh, it would be great to open source it. I actually haven't gotten around to actually do it, but it would be a good, you know, example case for that. So uh, why why would we do that, right? So why would we uh, open source uh, stuff like that? Um, I mean, one thing is like uh, you want to inspire other people. You want to get um, feedback on like what you've been doing. Maybe you also get in touch with people that actually feel the same way and are like, hey, um, I've built something similar. Um, and um, eventually, if like even if you have a really good idea or like multiple people come together. Um, you know, you can leverage like the you know the skilled uh, people out there that want to contribute to your open source project. 
Um, I mean, there's a variety of reasons why we, uh, you know, want to do that or we uh, should be doing that. I mean, that's why we're all here because this is an open source conference. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time like talking about the reason uh, why we should be doing it. But um, eventually, it comes down to um, get it out in the wild. So um, the idea behind that is, you know, all this all the stuff that I listed here on on those slides is like uh, getting other people involved into like something cool that you build. It may not even be something that like solves a particular problem. It can be like something you know that's in the art space. You you know you do something with like canvas and draw something on it, and you just want to share it with other people. Then they can leverage and do something else uh, that's cool. Um, so I mean like once you put it out there, you're like hey, it's out there. Use it. You know like uh, tell me what you how you feel about it. Maybe you can get it running because it's it uh, you know it doesn't have all the documentation on it, or it's really hard to set it up because it uses. Uh, an exotic technology. I would call Erlang pretty exotic. Maybe you disagree there, because I know you like it. Um, <laughs> but you know, the point being is like, you know, uh, congratulations, you, you, know, you just contributed uh, to the open source uh, world. I kind of like it because it's exotic. Oh, you kind of like it because it's exotic? <laughs> I used to feel uh, uh, the same way about Linux, like in the late 90s, when you had to like, go to a bookshop to order the distribution. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't remember. Like it sold out pretty like pretty soon afterwards. Um, so yeah, I mean, like once you've done it, I know there's reasons to celebrate. Like you, you know, you made an open source contribution, even though it might not be the, the next jQuery or something like that. But you know, it's cool. So we should all be doing that. Um, the next thing is uh, once it's out there, people, you know, gonna use it. They may discover it through like uh, Google, or like if they just go on GitHub and search for like something that they, you know, interested in. Uh, they may just come across your project, and um, I mean, I'm, um, like once you put an open source project out, that you, like the code that you actually wrote, that you put together, that's yours, and other people are going to use it, they will have, you know, obviously trouble and, and, and problems, and also suggestions and, and ideas that they, you know, that they may confront you with. So once you're actually like creating an open source project and you're like the, the, the maintainer or the sponsor of it, um, it's out there, people, people will respond to it. And um, <clears throat> if it's something that like, people are really excited about, um, it actually, you quickly you know, like, transition into different roles, or like, uh, other roles, not just the, the guy that created it and then like, wrote the code for it. Like, out of a sudden, people may even submit pull requests or send you patches. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of cases where like, people would put something out there and they didn't even expect to get anything back but then got confronted with like a huge variety of patches or like a long stream of patches like over uh, days and weeks. And uh, I found myself in the same situation a little bit. I mean, I, I make it sound like I've been doing that for a long time, but uh, um, I've been only like really actively contributing for, uh, to open source software over the last two or three years. But uh, I just found myself in a situation where I, like, I created something and all of a sudden I spent more time actually like maintaining, reviewing, uh, probably even kind of like putting my stamp on it because I like a certain coding style or like, I want to maintain, you know, level quality. So, you know, patches are awesome, but there's definitely, you know, there's, 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 there's work required, right? There's like, yeah, you, you, you're actually like making the right, uh, you know, uh, gesture right there. There's, there's good ones, there's bad ones. Sometimes they're really bulky, and you're like, can't you please break it, break it up in smaller pieces? So, um, you know, there's like, it's, it's great, but there's, there's uh, you, you, out of a sudden you're doing other things than actually coding. You actually, you know, you're maintaining. Um, another thing is like, uh, you know, just, you know, answer questions, how do I get it running, how do, why doesn't it work with Windows, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's like all of a sudden you just, you, you working with a community, you're maintaining patches, you reviewing code, you, at the same time you probably have some sort of, like once you realize that this is actually something, you may even have some sort of roadmap in your head that you want to, uh, you know, uh, extend it with certain features and all that. Anyway, um, um, at the end of the day, you, you, you know, it seems like you're spending more time like, maintaining, managing the project, and not so much coding. I mean, one thing that I wanted to say is, obviously, uh, setting up a workflow is a really good idea. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, think, I think Linux still um, accepts patches per email, and then like, one of the you know, maintainers of a certain part of the kernel just patches it into the trunk, and like, you know, there's some sort of workflow that you have to follow if you want to like, uh, submit code. Um, one thing that is really important uh, in, in this whole you know, effort of an open source project is obviously uh, quality assurance, and that's you know, code reviews and all that. But what's uh, really helpful are tests. 
like unit tests, functional tests, and all that. And uh, you know, you can only get the internet to help you if you have tests. That's kind of like the bottom line message um, of these slides here. Um, so yeah, testing is key. Um, it also makes it a lot easier for other people to contribute to your project, obviously, um, because if you change code, you run your tests, you can see does everything else still work, and uh, like my feature on top of that, or did I create a new feature but killed everyone else's, or like you know the existing code base. Um, so it even like helps people to be able to uh, start contributing to a project because they get a, they get confidence when they can run the test sheet that you know that actually this stuff is still working. Um, Another thing that's really important in that equation is that you actually that you're able to e uh, easily execute the tests. As like someone who wants to contribute, you don't want to download like 20 different frameworks and like a, I don't know, like an exotic execution environment, which is Erlang, obviously, um, just to get like the, the tests executed and all that. Uh, yeah, obviously the better test coverage, the merrier. Uh, those are like obviously very um, you know obvious things in the, in, the, uh, in an open source project. Uh, what's also pretty cool are like uh, lint is like uh, JS hints just to um, like for JavaScript for that like uh, for that matter to just uh, check uh, code quality like you know if you like semicolons you can like specify all that in your kind of configuration. The other tools for other languages like one thing I can remember from the top of my head is like uh, pep8 for Python. Um, I, I bet there's other things uh, like other stuff out there for Java and for uh, all kinds of languages. Um, yeah, unit tests, integration tests, functional tests, all of that is, uh, is great, uh, the more the merrier. Um, we'll get back to this later. Um, so all that being said about like, you know, you put your code out there, you have a project, let's assume you get a lot of traction, you get a, you get a lot of people, uh, you know, submitting patch and questions and all that. Um, eventually, like you, you kind of overwhelm with like the work that you didn't expect, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, you you also want to code, and you want to, you want this project to, you want to push this project forward, right? And if it's not even like something that concerns work, it's something that you have in your spare time. So um, you be, you guys may have noticed that I have a little accent in my uh, in my English. So um, I grew up in like a little town in uh, in southern Germany. That's a picture of it. It's pretty beautiful. Um, and we Germans, we well, you have a spare time. You know, we we have a lot of vacation days, and we like to enjoy um, the nature. So here are a bunch of things that we like in Bavaria, which is like the state in southern Germany where I'm from. Uh, obviously, we like the mountains, and uh, we be, we're really good at soccer. soccer. I know like, probably no, none of you guys in this room give uh, like a lot about soccer, but they have a good soccer team. Now, now I look kind of dumb because I didn't really do my research on like, how much soccer traction is going on in Portland. Still relative. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it was just a great year for my soccer team. Munich won like all the, you know, the, the great, or like the big competitions and like, you know, the national and like the European level and all that. So we're very proud of that. And we like to watch the games, you know, and like you, if you have to look at a pull request so you can watch a game, it's really hard. Um, of course, we like Oktoberfest, you know. Unfortunately, this is not me. I was actually looking for a shot that's similar that has, you know, my face in it, but uh, I don't always bring a, like a great photograph uh, to the Oktoberfest, which I'm going to do this year because Peter's really good at it. Um, so yeah, I mean, we just like uh, nature. Uh, we like outside. We like to not spend a whole lot of time doing stuff that we don't enjoy. But that's the bottom line message. And I'm pretty sure this is not something that only the Germans do. Like probably everyone in this room like really likes to uh, do the fun part of the work um, and not so, and, like avoid the not so fun part. Um, so yeah, I mean, being happy takes a balanced lifestyle, and that's kind of like why I want the internet, you know, to help me. So what do you do when you need more, you know, more time outside of work? You, you know, you ask the internet, help me, internet, with my open source project as a baseline. Um, so yeah, the internet yells back. Obviously, you're working on an uh, open source project, and uh, you know, why don't you use GitHub, dude? Right? Um, GitHub has figured it out how to like socially make, make coding social, you know, like kind of put a built-in workflow on it. I know the Oktoberfest, uh, Octocat is uh, pretty cool. They call it Oktobercat, so it's like Oktoberfest and Octocat together. They have a really, they have like a, a, a page on their website that's all different Octocats. You can find like one for Halloween. There's one like riding a bear and has, it has a saber. I don't know what that is, but it's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, Go um, like GitHub has figured it out like it's, it's uh, it's great. You know, you need like uh, source code uh, source code control anyway. So you know, why wouldn't you use something like that? Git is great for distributed projects. 
if you have like a lot of uh, uh, outside contributors um, sending you patches. Um, and you know, it has like a, this built-in workflow, which is like a pull request, which like distributes, uh, a pro like which encourages other people to fork your code, make changes, and like <coughs> contribute it back. So I mean, this is all not news, right? Um, social coding tools for community has an issue tracker, uh, and you can like leave comments on code and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? It's free for open source, so why wouldn't you use it, right? So. Uh, so now you like throw back in the internet, like yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. I've been doing that for the, like you know like for the last five years. I don't know how long uh, GitHub has been around. Um, so this is like not you know that's not really news to me. So um, the internet says like you've got tests, right? So you should use uh, GitHub. Uh, you should like use Travis and the GitHub integration for that. Uh, for the guys or like for the guys in here that haven't heard about Travis, it's like a continuous integration uh, system. It's born out of open source. And um, what it does, it's like you can set it up with your GitHub. It integrates really well with it. And it'll uh, execute a test. So um, it does it for a variety of programming languages. Um, you can just hook it into a Travis. And whenever like, someone does a push to your repo, uh, GitHub will send a notification over to uh, Travis. Travis will pull down your latest code and like, run it in a job and then report back if it worked or not. Uh, or if you test past it then. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a continu continuous integration system that lives on the web that's uh, open source uh, friendly. It's also free for open source projects. Um, I think they're working on a pro version, but yeah, obviously we want to use that uh, for open source projects so it's free of charge. Um, so now like going back to what I said earlier, um, if I if I'm looking at a, uh, at a project that is actually that lives in the browser, that is like, a, let's say, a jQuery plugin or something, the only unit tests that I really can write are like, um, what did I can, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but like the most uh, obvious ones are like uh, unit tests. So I can like, uh, I can just use uh, Jasmine or Mocha or uh, uh, QUnit for that. So um, the problem with that is, I can easily pull them up in my browser when I'm working on it, but if I'm running on a Mac, you know, I may be limited to what browsers are available on that platform. So I can't really test it on IE, which is probably you know, still a huge chunk of like, uh, you know, what your user base may be using. So um, test coverage is great from like, you know, covering the code, but you may have trouble executing them on all the different browsers. So um, that being said, I mean, that's a company I work for. Uh, Sauce Labs provides an open source offering uh, that's called Open Sauce, and uh, it does exactly um, the same thing that it does to commercial users. You can just uh, you can just request any type of browser to like execute your or like to open a website, and uh, it's on demand and it like has a variety of platforms. It covers like Mac, Linux, uh, Windows, um, and you know all different browsers. So uh, the great thing is is like it's it's Selenium compatible. You can just uh, use web drivers on any web driver and talk to it, and uh, it's unlimited for uh, open source projects. So you can just sign up and, and use the service, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, <clears throat> so um, you know, now we have all these pieces. You have GitHub. It hosts your source code. Um, it talks to Travis. You can like, set up a U repo to, uh, to run uh, in Travis like every build, uh, pull in your tests, execute them, report back. And then you have like, Sauce Labs uh, automa like, automation that has like, browsers and all that. But now you kind of have to like, you know, put that all together if you want to leverage all of that. Um, and by, by meaning, like by leveraging all that, I mean like uh, whenever like code comes in, it gets executed and like you know if it's working or not. So you don't have to do that manually and check out the code, run it locally, not knowing if it works in all the browsers because you only run a certain platform which might be Mac and not Windows. Um, so the, another thing comes into the picture, which is Grunt.js. Uh, I'm not sure like, how many of you are familiar with like Node.js and like the whole ecosystem around it. So I'm going to talk about this, uh, this a little bit. So Grunt is like uh, the new make, the gene you make for uh, JavaScript. Like, I mean, it's kind of like not the exact same thing, but like it has the same, the same ideas and like it borrows a lot of concepts of it. So it has like you can like specify tasks and you can automate your build process. In JavaScript, for example, especially for the, um, the browser client part, it's very common to have like, the JavaScript code base being very readable in like, you know, the dev stage. But eventually, when you want to distribute it, you, you want to minify it. You, wanna, you probably want to obfuscate it if you, you know, if you feel like there's a lot of details in there that people shouldn't mess around with. 
Um, you can like all automate that with Grunt. And uh, you know, it's very developer friendly. It's like definitely part of this whole tool chain that you know, comes with like uh, Node.js. Um, it has already a lot of uh, contributions from, you know, um, in, in terms of like what tasks it can do. So for example, if you, if you want to minify your JavaScript, there's already a task available for that. You can just use it in your, in your grant script. And you know, you have different build targets. Uh, what tasks uh, they are called in Grunt.js. And uh, yeah, and you can just use that. It's open source. Node.js is open source. Um, it also provides you with like a, a task uh, that just serves pages. And it happens to have a task uh, that runs uh, unit tests, JavaScript unit tests on sauce, which I heavily contributed to and which inspired me to do all this talk here. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, for you know, for people that uh, that don't know about Node, Node is a, a, a V8 like Chrome's V8, uh, Google V8, the the really fast JavaScript execution engine powered like um, programming environment that like uh, allows you to write JavaScript outside of the browser. It um, comes with like fully uh, asynchronous I/O, and uh, it's great because I love JavaScript. I can write it in the browser and on the server. And at the same time, I I, I get benefits for like. Um, network applications that have a high concurrency because it does like async I/O, um, and it does it natively. Like there's no option. I mean, there's an option to do sync, but it's not like other programming languages that like do it the other way around, where something is sync and then they put async on top, and like you have to choose between the two, and then there are libraries that are not compatible and all that. But yeah, it's great. You should uh, look at it if you haven't. Um, so yeah, um, after like talking all this, I'm going to show a little demo. You know how you can actually let the internet work for you and like. Make your whole um, streamline your whole uh, open source <laughs> project contribution process workflow, whatever we want to call it. Um, all right, let's exit the full screen mode. Um, so I set up a little project on my GitHub, the open source uh, open source bridge demo, which is basically a copy of a jQuery pl plugin uh, for the validation. Um, I've been helping this, these guys to set all that up, so I asked them if I can use this for the conference, and they said, like, yeah, go ahead, please. Um, so what I did here is, it's, it's not a fork, it's actually like a real, like, I basically checked out their code and just pushed it to a new repo. Um, and in here, I set up, um, oh, let's, let's first go to Travis. So I hooked it into Travis. Uh, Travis is on, under travisci.org, and uh, you can basically just go to your account details, um, you have to authorize your GitHub account, or like uh, Travis, to use your GitHub account to get access to your repo and all that. Uh, once you've done it, it actually syncs all the repos in here, and then it, all it takes is uh, is basically uh, you know turning the switch here and saying like I want to use that uh, repo to uh, you know use continuous integration on Travis. And as you can see here, I've done that with um, the open source bridge demo, a uh, demo, and um, what that means is like that. Uh, essentially, it goes into GitHub and s sets up webhooks, which are like a, uh, an API that is like I think standardized that you can use to like notify other uh, web, like web applications or applications in general um, about events. And if you if you can do that yourself, but it's much easier to like, just let it Travis do it. It like you know fills in a couple of user like um, username and like access key details and all that. Um, once you've done that. Travis knows about you and, and your particular repo. Um, you still have to uh, tell Travis what kind of, you know, what, what the continuous integration is supposed to do, what tests you want to execute, what environment you want to use. I mean, there's you know, Java, Node, all that, um, Ruby. So um, let's just take a look at the Travis YAML. So this is a file that actually tells Travis CI what to do. Um, it's like in YAML, which is like the, the attempt to make configuration you know, files uh, independent of programming languages. Um, as you can see in here, like, I'm using Node because Grunt.js runs on Node, but I'm only using it as a vehicle to actually execute my JavaScript tests that are in the browser on Sauce Labs. Um, um, but you know what, let's just run it first and I'll show you what it actually does before we uh, talk all the, all the details. Um, so I have my project here, it's set up, it is in Travis. Let's go here, OSB demo. And 
what I can do now is like I can just modify any file in here. Uh, let's just modify some code. Instead of doing it in, a, in an editor, I just do it in the, in the web interface, so it looks a little nicer and it's easier to, to understand. Um, so what I'm going to do is just I, I change the default here from like true to false just to make it fail. Um, so I mean, my unit tests are going to fail, obviously. Make sure all my tests, not all my tests, tests fail. So I'm hoping that like uh, Travis is not so busy. It, get, it, seems, it tends to be busier during the day, so we don't have to wait forever like until it kicks off our build. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes it takes a little bit until it updates because it pulls like the uh, REST API. So what I usually do, I'll go, go on build history because it seems to update that quicker than uh, if you just look at the project or like the repo in Travis. So as you can see here, um, it actually already received the, the push from GitHub. Um, and it created a build, and like it gives it like a build ID and all that. And right now it's in the created state, so I say let's give it a minute or two, and uh, wait and until it, if it kicks off. Otherwise, I have like I recorded a demo last night um, where it actually runs, so we don't have to wait for it. Um, oh, there it is. So <clears throat> I got a worker assigned, so now it kicks off the build. So let me open Sauce Labs real quick. So I lo I'm logged in with my personal account, and I used my account details to set this all up, so it will run on my personal account here. Um, you know, it will execute all the, uh, it will set up like the, the repo to have all the dependencies pulled in, like the, the uh, node modules, like the JavaScript libraries that it uses. And it um, <coughs> takes a little bit, because there's a, a bunch of stuff that it downloads. Um, Optionally, you can like execute your unit tests like using QUnit that pulls in PhantomJS. If you heard about that, it's like a, a headless web kit, and it doesn't require to actually have a browser because you can just run it as a command line tool. A lot of people do that on Travis because Travis doesn't have the built-in ability to like launch you know a variety of browsers. So yeah, come on, internet, be faster. Um, so while we're waiting, there's one important thing that I wanted to mention. Um, the way this works is like uh, the unit tests live in the repo, obviously. Um, the tests get executed in a remote, like in a cloud on, on VMs. So in order to be able to actually serve the pages that are in your local repo on Travis to uh, the cloud servers, it has to have like a tunnel. So Sauce Labs has a tool called uh, Sauce Connect that it um, <coughs> uses for that. It, like, it spins up a VM on the other side and establishes like an encrypted tunnel between. Travis and uh, Sauce, and that way the repo can host, or like yeah, can ba basically serve the um, the unit tests to uh, uh, to Sauce Labs uh, cloud service. And um, the 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 great thing is that uh, Grunt Sauce Labs, that um, plugin that I've been uh, contributing to for Grunt, uh, basically just implements the whole thing. So all you have to do is literally like set up your account details, and it will take care of all that. Well, let's just refresh. I'm not sure if it actually. If it still downloads, looks like it. The problem is like that Grunt Sauce Labs has a, a, a pretty big file in there that is like a couple of megabytes big, so it's probably downloading it right now. Um, let's give it a little, couple of more seconds, not minutes. I'm just going to pull up the video real quick. So yeah, this is basically the same thing. I just uh, recorded. I hope you guys can see that. So you know, it creates the build. Um, this is my. Uh, this is the account that it runs on. And uh, you know, it's still in the created mode. Uh, let's just skip ahead a little bit because we don't need to watch the dependencies getting pulled in. Uh, 
Okay. So yeah, eventually it will it will just collapse the whole dependency pulling in part, like it. The, it shows the console output, but it also groups it together, so you don't have to look at like all the stuff that doesn't really uh, concern you as much. Um, then it l l runs like a hint, like JS hint, which is like this linting tool, just to make sure that the code is actually you know com in compliance with all the, um, the, st uh, the the rules and policies. And uh, this little uh, cloud up there indicates that Sauce Connected Tunnel is established, and um, it's actually still working on that. Um, establishing that, that tunnel takes a little bit because it spins up a pristine VM on the cloud side um, that acts as an endpoint for uh, the tunnel. And yeah, it's connected to Sauce Labs now. I hope this is not too small. And boom, yeah, so it executes the test. And the video is going to switch back, and you can see here how it actually executes the test on like, uh, VMs in the cloud. And here's a live video. So this is a VNC live stream uh, watching an IE10 running on Windows 8 executing the tests. And since I you know, inserted that, like, uh, I changed the default value of that. Obviously, a bunch of tests are uh, going to fail. So they will all turn to fail. And Travis will report that. Or like, it will get reported back to Travis. And uh, you, know, you know that your build failed, which was expected at that point. Um, so all this is pretty great, right? It's like um, whatever is in your master or like in your in your trunk, uh, you always like whenever you push to it, it, like it creates a new build and it runs and like uh, it'll show you what's going on and like if it's failed or not. Um, let's just go back here. So I'm not sure what's up with uh, Travis right now, but it seems like it got stuck here. Uh, but anyway, so. Uh, this, this concerns your trunk, so this is whenever you actually decided to merge something, but it, that doesn't mean that you always want to merge code, especially from a pull request, because you don't know yet if it's actually working. So instead of like checking out the code locally and running all that, um, GitHub has an has a awesome integration with Travis. It just does that automatically for you. Whenever a, a pull request shows up, it actually creates a pull request build on Travis. So uh, instead of trying to uh, do that live, I'm just going to show the video. So as you can see here, this is like uh, this is a fork of uh, the code that I put on my personal GitHub, and uh, what I'm gonna do here, or like what the video does, it just modifies the file, um, actually makes it fail because it's like by default it, it's all passing, and then creates a pull request uh, to you know in order to get merged back into the trunk, and uh, the pull request will uh, trigger a build on uh, on Travis, and report the status back into. Uh, into GitHub and use a project maintainer, you can see on the actual uh, pull request whether it failed or if it, whether, whether it passed before you even merge it. So I'm doing the exact same thing here, modifying a line. Um, as I said, this is on the fork. This is not on, on, the, uh, on the master repo. And then I'm creating a, a pull request. And yeah, I'm calling it make sure test will fail and submitting this one. And, um, and then this is the master repo. So like, this is not the fork. This is where I forked it from. And then I, I, I changed the forked code and then like, uh, created merge requests. So I'm, I'm assuming everyone knows how that works on GitHub. Um, and then it'll show up like, if I as a maintainer log on to my GitHub, it'll show up on the side here to change the interface recently. And I get confronted with a pull request. I'm like, oh my god. OK, uh, what happened here? And um, you know, uh, it'll, it'll kick off the build here for a pull request. And it runs the whole thing. Let's skip ahead now, because we don't want to watch that running. It obviously runs on source, executes your tests in different browsers. And eventually, you, know, you can watch it. Obviously, it fails again here. But instead of like having to log on to Travis and check what's up or like on Sauce Labs, you just want to go back to your GitHub and look at your pull request and you want to know did it pass or not, right? So that's exactly what it uh, what it does. So yep, right here. So let's uh, pause here real quick. So I'm not. I hope you guys can see that it's like red here. There's a little red dot, and that is actually a Travis build. So if it would have passed, it would it would be green. 
So I'm hoping that I move my mouse over here in this video. Oh, it actually turns into a, into a little uh, uh, red cross that says it failed. So this is pretty great stuff. So you, I mean, you can obviously use that also for your unit tests that run for, uh, let's say, uh, Python. You don't have to like, necessarily use that for JavaScript. But the great thing about this is like, it uses GitHub uh, to, and, and uses Travis to run your uh, unit tests, but it also uses all kinds of browsers that you may need to make sure that your code actually works in like a, you know, the, over the range of the different browsers that are out there. And you can do it all for free, right? Because it's all open source services, open source offerings. The whole tool chain is all open source. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great stuff. So, um, And then you know when you get a pull request, do I want to merge that one or not? Because you actually know if the build failed or not. You can just be like, hey, something made the build fail. Can you please check it out before you, uh, you, know, before you push, uh, or like make another, push another p piece of code to actually fix this so I can merge it? And what that does is like it prevents you from doing a whole lot of legwork, which is you know, forking into someone's uh, specific fork, like into, or like cloning into a fork, getting that on your computer, and then like running it. And like for the JavaScript test, it's even worse because you don't have all the browsers available. So it really is nice that you can like, just offload all that into the internet and say like, hey, you do that, do that for me. All right. Um, uh, the other great things available, I'm just going to show that real quick. So <clears throat> I only have probably six more minutes. Um, they're like build badges. Uh, Sauce Labs provides you with a badge um, that you can put on your readme of the GitHub repo. Um, if you go to OSB demo here, it will grab the latest build that ran on Sauce Labs and it provides you with like a, a like nice matrix. There's one available that's more compact that you can put on your readme and your GitHub repo so people always know what browsers actually are passed and which one it didn't. Uh, just to kind of like, you know, this is the status of the project. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it has a like, great integration uh, with GitHub and like, uh, oops, that was the wrong button. And Travis. Um, so yeah, um, you know, how did this all work, right? So um, basically, I'm going to skip over this a little bit because we're running out of time. But um, what it does is like the, like the Travis, how many ones? Seven, Seven okay. Um, so yeah, what it does, it's like you have like uh, the YAML file in your directory, in your repo, uh, that it will use to uh, figure out what language you're running on. In that case, Node.js and you know what you want to execute. Down here, this is really important. This is like encrypted um, environment variables. And in that case, it's like the source username and the source access key. Um, you can use Travis to actually encrypt it. That way you can like put it out there without actually compromising your password. So you're not sharing your password or like your access key with anyone, it's encrypted. And, and the public key of that sits in, in your repo. Um, and uh, all you, like so there's no way for like people to actually um, uh, decrypt it unless they wanna, you know, break the code. Um, all right, so there's, there's a grunt file in the repo that like specifies all the tasks and how they work together. Um, up here, for example, is a browser matrix, so it defines all the browser that it runs on. Um, if we scroll further down here in the grunt file, there's something called Sauce Labs QUnit that actually executes the tests. There's like Sauce Labs QUnit, Sauce Labs Mocha, and Sauce Labs Jasmine so far. Um, you know, if you guys want to use this and you have different frameworks, um, you know, feel free to like reach out. I think we also support uh, Yahoo uh, user interface, like YUI as a test run and all that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to set up to get this working, right? Um, the unit tests live in a certain directory. Then we got this Travis YAML file and uh, a grunt configuration. So you have to like do a whole lot of boilerplate to actually get this all working. And um, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool stuff. So you can like leverage all these free offerings of open source uh, services that are out there, like Travis, um, GitHub, and Sauce Labs, uh, to actually help you a lot with your um, you know, open source project. Um, you know, there are obvious benefits in here. You, you know when a pull request is going to make your build fail before you're actually merging it. Um, it runs it like on every, um, whenever you push code. Um, so it's, it's, it's really great and it's free of charge. Um, so yeah, thank you, Internet, for doing all, the, all my work. Um, one step closer to retirement. Not, not quite there yet, though. Um, 
All right, so I've got one more thing. You know, like Steve Jobs taught me that you have to you know, do that in every presentation. So you know, it's, like, it's like so much boilerplate to set this up. You have to like, create this uh, Travis YAML file. You have to do the, create this uh, grunt uh, file. And you, know, you may not be familiar with all these technologies anyway. So I spent a couple of uh, days to, you know, to, uh, to make it easier for you to like, make use of all this awesome sauce. And I came up with like, a tool that's called um, a Butter Knife. And you know, the butter knife you can use to spread all this awesome sauce over your project. Um, so what this tool does, it's a command line tool. And I'm just going to do all that real quick. And uh, this command line tool you can just easily install using npm. And what it does is like you run it in your repo. You check out your repo, you run it. And it'll, it'll just create all these files for you. It will create the Travis YAML. <coughs> it will read in your grunt file. It will convert it into an abstra abstract syntax tree and like insert all the stuff that you need and then write it out again. Um, it screws up a little bit of your formatting, but it's still pretty cool. If you don't have any of that, it will just create them. It will search your repo for tests and just make some basic assumptions on like how unit tests look like and then fill them in. So um, you probably don't have time for that, but you can basically check out an arbitrary uh, project on GitHub that has unit tests in it, like JavaScript unit tests, run the tool and it will set it up for you. I mean, like, sometimes it doesn't quite work because it's still in an early stage, but feel free if you want to use it to like, you know, raise issues and like, we can work on that. Uh, but it's pretty cool because you can basically really like, fork into something or clone into something, run the tool, and then like, write ground and it will just execute the whole thing. And then you just push it out to, um, to your GitHub and sign up on Travis and it will just do the whole thing, in, like, like the whole integration, and you don't have to do all this boilerplate work. Um, yeah, as I said, it's like, it's like an NPM module at this stage. You can just install it with NPM, install uh, minus G butter knife to make it available as a global um, tool. Like it puts it in your path. All you do is like you CD into your repo and like run butter knife. And, and then you can actually just look at, uh, you know, what code it creates. So let me just show you that real quick. I think we still have a little bit of time left for that. So yeah, this is yours, bridge demo. Let me just uh, check out a branch real quick. Uh, OK. So I'm going to reset the repo just to not have uh, you know, all that stuff set up. All right. Um, and then I run butter knife. And like what it does is like it, it gets uh, npm to install all the dependencies. It'll, it'll set up the Travis YAML file. The only thing you have to do is like once you sign up for Open Source on Source Labs, you get like a username and a and a um, and an access key, and you put that in your environment. Uh, grab Source, like down here. Oh, sorry. And what it does is like it grabs it from there, inserts it, it calls out to Travis and encrypts it for you. So all you have to do is literally like, you actually have, don't have to worry about any of the boilerplate stuff. Um, so yeah, like it, ah. so yeah, it creates these secure uh, environment variables for you by calling out to Travis. Um, it'll set up the grunt file. Uh, source labs. And yeah, like it, it discovers like the, the test cases that you have in your repo. What it does is like it just opens all the files that end in HTML and it looks for Mocha, QUnit, and Jasmine. And if it finds one, it just inserts it there. Um, the tool is pretty naive at that point. Like it uses an abstract, abstract syntax tree to like load in grunt file, like the grunt file, modifies it, and writes it out again. So you know, if you want to use it, it may break. You know, because it's like still fairly young. But yeah, feel free to reach out to me or create a uh, GitHub issue if you want to use it. And uh, yeah, that's mostly what I have. Um, there's a couple of like, small announcements uh, to make, like Source Connect right now, the tunnel that we have to like, establish a connection between Source Labs and, and the server or like, the, the machine that runs your tests on, is like a Java tool. We're working on making that like, a native extension for like, your programming environment, like Ruby, Java, uh, Node, and, and get rid of like, the, the Java dependency. Um, so that's in the works, and also there's a little bit of a problem right now with like these encrypted environment variables that I showed you guys to to share your um, your Sauce Labs account with Travis. 
that is encrypted here with pull requests, and we're working on a solution that you don't have to share your um, account details, details at all. It will all be encrypted and use a token system. So this, all, this will all get a little bit more slick, even more slick than it already is. So yeah. All right, yeah, this is all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions. Thanks. Yeah, don't forget, follow me on the Twitter machine. Yeah. Any questions? Please. Is this like an Arduino? No, well, it's a, just my own platform. It's a software platform, radio platform. And I want to like test it over a cable with another one of these. And bare metal arm development. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, well, I'm interested in doing like when somebody. So I, I would love to have automated testing of my pull requests, for example, on GitHub. And you know, like does Travis provide, or does any other framework for continuous integration provide provide kind of hooks where I can have my own test system? Yeah. To it? Well, what you can, what you could probably do is like run. I mean, I'm not entirely sure how you would connect the device to a computer and that make that available on the internet. But you can use, as far as I know, you can use GitHub and they have a webhook API and you can, you know, they, they raise events and they send a payload. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what Travis does do. It's like a generic like uh, API that you can just use to push to something that like uh, makes use of that information. And if you would run some sort of server that is connected to this device, you should be able to like code something against it. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know the details in, in entirely about it, but I'm pretty sure you could like, you know, use those APIs to make that happen. Yeah. We, we're doing like we are actually in the process of doing some real device work in the mobile, you know, space like Android and iOS. If you know, if you guys decide like event, like at some point that you want to go down and like replacing some of the embedded stuff with like an Android solution or something, then there may maybe uh, you know some way to leverage you know like the offerings that we're working on for mobile um, to actually run Android stuff and test against it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, like, like real embedded, embedded stuff, uh, you know, it's tricky, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a cool side project. You should totally I definitely think look into that. Yeah. Because I mean, we use GitHub. I have pull requests sitting, waiting for me to test them right now. Right, right. And I would really like to have automated tests. Right, right. But it involves, you know, compiling firmware, installing firmware, mm -hmm. thing, compiling host code. And, and, you know, there are all these different steps that, right. that can be on. Right, right. But it couldn't be automated by somebody else. I have right. have on my own. So yeah, this is a very generic case for you know what happens in a browser. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, like the, the principles of it are fairly universal, and you can do you know you can use all of that in different ways. But you have a very specific case right there. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.